Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, January 10th. The Jaguars, they fired their defensive coordinator. They fired most of their defensive staff, a couple offensive staffers as well. On Monday, Black Monday, as it is known around the NFL, we're going to look at some potential defensive coordinator candidates for the Jaguars, right? They've got to fill that position. No longer have a defensive coordinator. They don't have most of their defensive staff. They did keep a couple guys. But look, there's a lot of talented, well-regarded defensive coaches on the market right now that could potentially be hired by the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to dive into a handful of them here, more than a handful, really. There's several guys that I'd be really fired up about, and we will start with them. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. We've got our end of season sale going on right now through Thursday, January 11th. It's 30% off everything with code Duval. That's D-U-U-U-V-A-L. Three U's there. All right, genjag.com slash shop. So getting into these coaching candidates, right? I have to start with Ajiro Evero. I I think that this would be my favorite hire personally. He's not as experienced as a defensive coordinator as some of the other guys on this list. And I do think after hiring someone who had zero experience that Doug Peterson is going to and will need to hire someone that has experience being a DC, right? I think Ajiro Evero has been a DC at two different stops, Denver and Carolina. Players love his coaching, his teaching, his communication style. And when I'm looking at defensive coordinators, when I'm looking at coaches in general, you've got to have a sound scheme, right? Obviously, that is paramount. But you also have to be able to communicate what you want at each level of your defense, not only to the players, but to the coaches who then need to be able to communicate that to their position groups, right? Communication and teaching is critical. Interpersonal relationships, critical. And, and the ability to take complex ideas, complex concepts, and make them consumable, make them digestible for these players to where they can hear it in the, the meeting room, they can go out on the practice field and realize it, and then go out on the game field and do the same thing, right? So players love Ajiro Evero and his ability to coach, teach, and communicate, and I think that that is critical, Right? For any defensive coordinator, any coach you're going to hire. He did a tremendous job in Denver two years ago. Um, He's going to run a base 3-4. He comes from the Fangio scheme, which has come under fire as of late. But he has a varied approach, right? This is a guy that has multiple different coaching influences. um, And I think that he has shown the ability to adjust according to what he has on the defensive side of the ball. He's a younger coach. He's very smart, very enthusiastic. He got the Panthers' defense, despite not having a ton of talent, playing much better down the stretch in 2023, you know, over the course of the year. He is a rising star in the coaching world. Evero has experience with Balky back in San Francisco. That could be good or bad. I'm not sure, to be completely honest with you, in terms of if he would want to come to Jacksonville to be the defensive coordinator. And he will be a hot name. He will be interviewing all over the place. He might be staying in Carolina to interview, right? We'll see how it plays out. But I think if the Jaguars landed a Giro Evero, it could be a home run hire for them. Next up is Jesse Minter, probably a base 3-4 as well. Uh, but this could be the next guy in line from Ravens background as a defensive coach. Michigan defensive coordinator, that coaching pipeline. You've seen Mike McDonald come into the NFL as a defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, and he is one of the hottest names in coaching right now. Um, Look, Jesse Minter, he coaches an aggressive, smart, tough, assignment sound defense at Michigan. This is a defense that runs NFL concepts consistently, and his players know what they're doing. His players understand what they're supposed to be doing. I think if you can communicate that to college kids, you can absolutely do the same thing at the NFL level. And again, he did coach with the Ravens for several years as a defensive assistant. He would bring a varied approach, similar to Evero, in my opinion. You know, the ability to game plan week to week to change things up. Uh, Spent four years with the Ravens, with Mike McDonald. I think this guy could be the next star in that mold, coming from Michigan, coming from Baltimore, and uh, bringing just a really smart, well-coached, aggressive defense to the NFL. He's the only 
only coach on this list that has not been an NFL defensive coordinator uh, or head coach for that matter. But uh, I do believe that he could be a star in this league. So I think he should absolutely be interviewed. I think that uh, that's the type of guy that could really become a move, needle, needle mover for the Jaguars. Next up, uh, we talked about two kind of younger coaches in the coaching realm. Next guy, he's been around. He has been a head coach. He has been a defensive coordinator for a long time. Leslie Frazier, not only has he been a defensive coordinator for a long time, but he comes from Buffalo, right? And the Jaguars, they kind of have a pipeline of Buffalo coaches that have come down here after leaving Buffalo, right? When you talk about special teams coordinator Heath Farwell, wide receivers coach, uh, came down for from Buffalo last year. Leslie Frazier could be that type of guy as well for the Jaguars. And if you want to... If you want a defensive coordinator who you don't have to worry about at all because you know he's got this for Doug Peterson, Leslie Frazier could be that guy. He's more of a 4-3 defensive coordinator. He's a lot older than these other guys we've talked about, but he has done it at such a high level for so long. I would love to see him in Jacksonville. Uh, He's not a coach that typically throws a bunch of stuff in different places week to week, right? It's more of, we do this, we do it at a high level because we know what we're doing, we know how to communicate, and uh, we just know our assignment and we're going to play fast because we know exactly what we're doing week to week. It's more straightforward. It's know your job and do your job. I'm going to communicate it to effectively. Your position coaches are communicated to you effectively, and you're going to go out and get the job done because you know what you're doing every single day, every single week. So I think that Leslie Frazier could be a very good candidate for the Jaguars if he is interested. A lot of people yesterday after Mike Vrabel got fired brought him up, and yes, if Mike Vrabel is interested in being your defensive coordinator, write a blank check, right? But I doubt that. I think that Mike Vrabel is going to be a head coach somewhere. I think he's going to be a head coach somewhere in 2024. So Shane Bowen could be the next best thing. That has been the Tennessee Titans defensive coordinator who has worked hand-in-hand with Mike Vrabel over the last several years to put together some game plans that have absolutely ruined the day of many an offensive coordinator, many a quarterback, including quarterbacks and offensive coordinators here in Jacksonville, right? They have messed up the Jaguars' day many times. They have not always had the best talent on the defensive side of the ball, right? But when they have... When they had Kevin Byard and David Long and Jeffrey Simmons and good edge players and good support players, they were one of the best defenses in the league, bar none. I mean, Shane Bowen can put together a game plan, and he'd be more 3-4. He would be more in the vein of an Ejiro Evero and a um, and a, a mentor, Jesse Minter, in the, in the idea that you can g- game plan week to week. You can really change things up. You can really throw things at opponents, and they're not going to be ready for it. Now, again, you have to be able to communicate and get these guys ready every single week when you do that, and we have seen Shane Bowen do that for uh, a big chunk of time there in, in Tennessee. I would be very fired up about any of those coaches. I think there's a few more coaches that potentially make sense as well that I wanted to touch on here uh, that may not be for me as much as the first guys we, we just talked about, but I think that they could be very good coaches nonetheless or coaches that Doug Peterson might believe could be very good for them. Patrick Graham, diverse background from a scheme standpoint. He's done a lot of different stuff in the NFL. Uh, Got a ton out of the Raiders this year. He is a very good coach. He has had multiple stops as a defensive coordinator. I think that Patrick Graham could be the type of guy that could come in and put together a staff and really inspire the defense. I, I don't think that the defense played inspired enough down the stretch. I think Patrick Graham could absolutely bring that for you. Mike Zimmer, I don't know if he's wanting to coach. I don't know if he's available, but he has always been a great, great, great defensive coach. I would definitely be looking into him if he is available, if he wants to come coach uh, and be a defensive coordinator. I think that that is kind of his calling, even though he was a head coach for quite some time. Uh, But he is up there a little bit older, so not sure what his interest is um, in getting back into it. Wink Martindale, Don Wink Martindale, who – coordinated the Ravens for for quite a while, coordinated the Giants for the last couple years. To me, this one would not make a ton of sense because he runs an aggressive 3-4 scheme that runs a lot of man coverage on the back end. 
I don't know how you go into next year wanting to run man coverage with Tyson Campbell, Darius Williams, and Trey Herndon. I don't see it. Uh, I think you would have to completely remake, revamp your secondary, and I don't think that should be the plan. I think that Tyson Campbell was injured most of this year, did not play his best. When he is at his best, when he is healthy, Tyson Campbell is one of the best young corners in football, bar none. I don't think you want to put him in a scheme that doesn't make sense for his skill set, right? I think you should say the same thing about Darius and Trey. Uh, and you know, Trey might not be the long-term answer at nickel, but I think Darius Williams should absolutely be in the Jaguars' plans over the next few years. He is playing damn good football. I know he's older. I know he's not super uh, tall, lengthy, but that is a guy that can just flat out play football. Okay? So, uh, for me, Wink Martindale doesn't make as much sense, but I could see Doug Peterson being interested because – He's experienced. He has had some serious success. He is aggressive, runs a 3-4 scheme. And so I could see Doug saying, these are a lot of the things I like about a coach. Could this make sense? I don't personally think it does, but I do think Doug might be interested. Um, Brandon Staley, not a very popular name right now. Jags fans will remember the absolute debacle in the playoffs against the Jags, right? But he had the Jags in hell early in that game before Michael Davis and a couple other Chargers defenders got injured in the secondary. He is a game plan defensive coordinator. He can figure out how to stop what you do best at a high level. He did that in some really big games for the Chargers over the last several years. I think if he is focused on defense only, not personnel, not the entire coaching operation, not the entire staff, not the offensive decisions, just defense, I think he finds success again. I'm not sure uh, what the future for him holds in 2024, but I do think Brandon Staley is a very good defensive coach. I think that if he is focused on just getting the most out of the players that are at his disposal on the defensive side of the ball, you could have you know, a guy who rises back from, from the ashes as a defensive coordinator in this league because he is really smart. He is a really good game planner, and I just think some same things went sideways for him as a head coach, as someone running the entire operation, as someone being a leader uh, of an entire football team. I just think that it wasn't quite right. I think he needs to take a lot of lessons from that to apply to not only being a head coach in the future potentially, but certainly as a defensive coordinator as well. There are a lot of other names that are out there that make sense, which is a good thing for the Jaguars. There are a lot of defensive coaches that I think could come in and and do a better job than what you saw in 2023 and 2022 with Mike Caldwell. Uh, I do think that Mike Caldwell was a little bit of a scapegoat, but I also think firing him was probably the right thing to do. I don't think it was the only thing you should do. I think that there were some other moves that probably should have been made, but I do think that the Jaguars have the opportunity to get someone who can come in and more cohesively coach an entire entire defense, right? Get the entire defense on the same page every single week. Uh, I think that's what you need in this defensive coordinator, someone who can lead these players, someone who can teach them, someone who can communicate with them and identify with them. And I hope that's what the Jaguars find in this defensive coordinator search. And obviously, got to fill out the staff as well. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And again, you can check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. We have got our end of season sale going on right now through Thursday, January 11th. 30% off everything with code Duval. That's three U's. Really appreciate y'all. Have a good one.